All right, so here in this video, we've got some exciting stuff for you involving my new home theater project. In fact, if you're interested in all things home theater, give this video a like and subscribe to my channel as we'll be updating it with relevant content. As we all know, aspiring filmmakers and movie lovers, they have to have the best screen possible to view all their content on with their latest films. To some, that may mean a 65 inch OLED TV or an 82 inch LED TV. But if you really want that home theater experience, if you really want to go and think bigger, you got to do it big. And sometimes people think that costs too much. I'm here to tell you that it doesn't. Here's the breakdown as to how much everything costs for my home theater project. Now I know a lot of you will get sticker shock when you see this price at the bottom, which is just under 10 grand, but don't be alarmed because I'm sure you've seen in many stores that there's TVs that can cost just as much, if not even more than that. Right here, I've got an OLED 77 inch that costs 15 grand. And think about it, when you guys go to the movies, you don't sit around a 77 inch OLED, you sit around something bigger. I'm sure everyone would like to do that, but you'd probably have to have an empty room in your house to do that with. To some, that's probably gonna be a challenge. Of course, an empty room has to be taken care of first. You gotta make sure the electrical is good, you gotta make sure the painting is good. For the best possible theatrical experience, you want it on the ceiling like I have it here. For most electrical work, like a ceiling mounted projector outlet, I highly recommend a trained electrician to do that kind of work because let's be honest, you want to be able to live to see your completed project. The screen I decided to get was the 110 inch Elite Screens Sable Frame B2. I got this one because I read on Amazon that the silver ticket screens, they weren't as good for contrast. So shout out to whomever made those reviews because these guys were spot on as you can see right here in a bit. Now. I rolled out a simple red rug from Home Depot onto the floor. It turns out I remembered the measurement wrong. You could see me trying to look to the side and figure out why it's too short. But uh, this one right here, right, it ended up being too narrow. But that's fine because I made it work. You could see I put a little red strip on the side and it all worked out for the better. You can have a rug like this professionally installed, but it's going to cost you upwards of 500 bucks. And if you rent like me, that it ain't, just ain't worth it. If you're wondering what the color is, it's called China Berry by a brand called Traffic Master and it costs around 51 cents a square foot. Now I had the challenge of trying to build this project in a room with three windows and you could imagine that's just a nightmare for room acoustics and sound. So two of the windows were facing the street and you could tell that was going to be a problem with noise and traffic and stuff like that. So the solution that I had was to buy some insulation, get some 3M77 spray, spray it to some cardboard, fill that in the windows with duct tape, and right then and there, that'll reduce the outside noise. The insulation is by Owens Corning. You could also find it at Home Depot. It's their R15 Ultimate Safety Line, which is great because it doesn't have fiberglass that doesn't hurt you when you're handling it. But you should still use some gloves as I did right here. You know, eventually I might get some plywood and affix it to the top of this, which would further reduce the noise from the cars and stuff like that. Most of the work I did felt done once all the pieces were in place and my octane chairs came in. And I had a friend build this platform that you see here, and it's able to hold well over 1,500 pounds, he tells me. Now, this platform will also get the rug treatment eventually. You don't see it with the rug right here. And at one point, I thought it was all set and ready to go, but turns out I still needed a little work. What's going on? Yeah, why is your projector off a little bit? Just grab the ladder so I can just square it up a little bit, because it looks a little bit off. I wanted to make sure I nailed the presentation aspect of my setup and that's where Shane came to the rescue. Check out his channel below and the links where you'll find reviews on the highest quality content and home theater gear available today. You'll also find tips and tricks to maximize your home theater's performance, which you can see him doing right now in my room. Overall the picture and sound is perfect. You know, I only have a 1080p projector, it's the Sony 40ES, but like I said it's a Sony projector and that's their thing. Eventually, I'll probably get a 4K projector, but in the meantime, the color, the clarity, the contrast, it's, it's spot on, it's perfect. It feels like I'm at the movies, and in fact, sometimes it looks even better. It's definitely nice to see my editing work on the big screen, literally. You know, this allows me to judge whether an image is really noisy, whether there's posterization, whether there's macro blocking, stupid stuff like that. If it looks good on that screen, it'll look good anywhere. Mobile devices, tablets, computers, whatever. Now, while the black levels aren't as good as this beast right behind me, the Sony A1E, the sound and scale of the room is what consistently bring me back to it time and time again for quality presentations, solo sessions, or 
hangout sessions. And if you consider how much a single TV can cost you alone with no sound, it's better off you do it the way I did it. You just gotta have the extra room. And for some people, like I said before, that may be the biggest problem. Since most people are DIY people, you probably should go that route since local shops like Best Buy typically charge an arm and a leg for something that a soccer mom can do. If you guys like what you saw here today, please leave a thumbs up on this video, consider subscribing, and let me know down in the comments if you have any suggestions for this theater, my channel, or anything else. Until next time, it's been real, it's been fun, and I'll catch you in the next one.